<clears throat> uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have a presentation uh, by Ismail uh, Melendez right now about uh, our food system, uh, gardening and veganism. And then afterward, we'll have an exciting panel discussion about this subject. So uh, please welcome Ismail. Okay, so uh, today I'm going to be talking about our food system and I'm going to be especially talking about uh, veganism and vegetarianism um, as an alternative or as an option that is available to us uh, to help uh, our planet. And uh, I'll also be talking about the impact of uh, our meat industry, of our food system to our health and to the earth, to our environment. Uh, so first I wanted to show you this video. Uh, it's a short video. It doesn't have any like of the animal killings and stuff like that to scare you or to gross you out. Um, it just has some, it's a, a, a clip from this movie, Food Incorporated, uh, which talks about the food industry and maybe you've seen it. Uh, I think if you Google it, you can probably find the movie. So maybe in the future you have time, you can take a look at it. Um, and
Okay, and so in that video, um, that church clip talked about like how uh, the, the production of meat is now centralized and that's to make it cheaper. So again, that comes to that profit motive about how everything on earth is for the profit, like to make the most profit. And you really, uh, they rarely consider, especially corporations and companies, they rarely consider like the effects it will have on people and on our, on our environment. Uh, so I want us to consider uh, this question um, before we start is, so is, why do you think that something as essential as what we put into our bodies is so often disregarded or not thought through carefully? What is the potential convenience of such a nonchalance, nonchalance and what problems can it lead to? So I think that's a really good question because a lot of the time when we grow up, we just, um, I mean, it's, it's also cultural. And it's part of family that what we eat is uh, uh, what our family gives us, right? And so, and you really think about it, like where does where does what I'm eating come from and stuff? Like it's not until you grow older that uh, some of us question or think about it and and consider like where where's where's our food coming from? Okay, so uh, in this presentation, I'll touch on the impacts of the meat industry, uh, which include environmental health, world hunger, and labor rights. Uh, and again, my name is Ismael Melendez, and I've been a uh, vegetarian for about six years, and uh, since November I've been vegan. Uh, and so also joining me later in the panel will be Emilia and Karina. I forget, but it's here. Uh, the levels of vegetarian, uh, so a, a lot of times we get the question when you're a vegetarian, like what is a vegetarian, what is a vegan, and like that's one of the most common questions, so there's this uh, picture I found online, uh, and it's a pretty good guide, so vegetarianism, um, that's, that's when you can eat uh, meat and milk and uh, eggs, uh, but then a vegan, uh, which is where I'm at right now, is uh, you can eat well, you can't, you can't eat any meat and no meat byproducts. And so there are other um, terms that can be used to describe different kinds of diets. Uh, so earth is what we eat. So um, this um, sentence uh, talks about how what all of earth eats is uh, what all of the people eat affects how the earth the environment, so I'll, I'll discuss more about it. Uh, so the environmental impact. The 2006 report from the Food and Agriculture Organization estimated that livestock was responsible for about 18% of the human-caused greenhouse gases. Uh, so that's uh, because of the transport of animals, because of the gases that animals produce, and because of all the energy that is used to produce animals. Uh, so that's where that uh, number comes from, those gases come from. About 30% of the world's total ice-free surface is used to raise grains, fruits, and vegetables that are directly fed to human beings, but to, not that are directly fed to human beings, but to support the chickens, pigs, and cattle that we eventually eat. And I think that's 30%, uh, that's how much land is used to raise the grains that are actually fed to animals. So there's a mistake there. Uh, but yeah, so there's a lot of the grains that, that we produce that instead of being used for human consumption, and you, and you all know we have, we still have uh, people who cannot, uh, don't have access to food in the world uh, who are hungry. Uh, so a lot of the food grains that are being used, that are being raised, uh, are being used for animals, to feed animals, to feed the cows and the chickens. So that's where you, where where this system goes wrong in like using this instead of using this food for human consumption, you use it you move it over here for the animals so they can be fed, and then that in turn goes for the people who can afford meat, which are most of the developed countries. Although a lot of the developing countries are now starting to adopt the American diet, which is a lot of meat. And so, so that I'll, I'll discuss more about that. Uh, the UN urges global move to meat and dairy free diet. Uh, that's from the Guardian, and that uh, and so that's the United Nations. They urge uh, that the people adopt uh, a dairy free diet and a vegetarian diet. 
Uh, and that's because, again, of all the greenhouse gases, because of all the use of land, all the use of, uh, it's just inefficient, especially when it's on a grand scale. And to feed so many people, imagine if we, everybody in the world just had the American diet and made so much meat and that would just be, just imagine all the, the greenhouse emissions and all the use of, of land and stuff like that. Okay, and then I found these uh, great um, graphs. And so you can see on the first one, the meat production and the predicted uh, meat consumption on the planet. So you can see that there. And then on the second graph, you can see food consumption in developing countries. And you can see that's increasing as they keep getting, as their economies keep getting more, I guess, more richer. Um, they can, the people can afford more meat and stuff like that. And then you can also, on the third one, on the third chart, you can see the CO2 produced by the different animals. And of course, and, well, you can see there that beef is like the one that produces the most CO2, the CO2 emissions. And you can see that compared to the plants which are old, flour, wheat, and carrots. Uh, and this graph, uh, you can look at the land needed for the production of one kilo of food. So you can look at the comparison between the meat, how much land is needed to produce beef, pork, chicken, eggs, versus fruit, potatoes, and vegetables. And these graphs I haven't talked about, you also um, want to consider like water, like how much water you're going to use to grow plants versus all that water you need to give to your animals. So that's something else you can consider, uh, how there's a lot more water being used. And then all the water, all the, um, all the bad stuff that the animals produce goes into our water and all that. Uh, chemicals like the antibodies, all the uh, matter that is produced by animals that goes into our rivers, into our oceans and stuff like that. So there's even more pollution, more impact to our environment, to our planet. Uh, and here's the big, here's the beef. This is a picture from the New York Times. Uh, the, this feedlot in California can accommodate up to 100,000 heads of cattle. So you can see all that. That's just like a little, a small percentage of the cattle that we have. But it's just, look at all that land and how it all fit together and stuff like that. And that's not nice. Okay, now uh, you are with Jeets. I'm going to talk about like the health, the effects to human health, and how a vegetarian uh, diet can help make it better. Uh, and so this is the latest uh, diet plan that the government has for people that they want people to adopt. And this is very arbitrary because uh, it's changed from different designs from a triangle to before this one they had like a ladder. And it also, if you think about it, uh, depending on who lobbies the most, for example, that dairy uh, is now a lot bigger than it used to be in other grass. And that's because the dairy has the big lobbying uh, companies or lobbying people in Washington, D.C. And so obviously they lobby, they, they, they have the same government and they want their part to be bigger because more people will buy milk and cheese and that means more profit for them. And so, I mean, this is, in this chart, it's like every part is almost takes one fifth. And so, you can even think about the politics and the profit that goes into just making this little graph which a lot of people use to, to plan their, their diets. Uh, and this is from the Nutrition and Clinical Practice and from the Brown University Health Service website uh, where they listed some health benefits of a vegan diet. Uh, and vegetarians have lower rates of heart disease and some forms of cancer than non-vegetarians. Uh, and so heart disease, coll collateral, colorectal, ovarian and breast cancers, diabetes, obesity, hypertension, lower body mass index, and cholesterol. These are all things that improve in uh, vegetarians or vegans. Um, and so, I mean, for example, here in the Valley, diabetes is like our biggest problem, and so is cancer. For, for the American population, it's cancer. So imagine a lot of people adopting a more vegetarian diet or just decreasing their intake of meat 
uh, should improve their health, and it should improve the cost that we waste in health expenditure as a country. Uh, and so these are preventable death rates uh, by county, uh, ages 0 through 74 from 2008 through 2010. And so these are uh, preventable diseases that a lot of them could be uh, prevented with having adopting a healthier, a vegetarian diet. And this is for Texas, the heart disease death rates in Texas for 2002. So these are heart diseases, one of the things that can be uh, that can be better if you adopt a vegetarian lifestyle diet. Uh, and then I want to talk about who eats. Uh, so the people that have the most money are the people that can afford the, afford the meat, uh, the countries that have the most money. Uh, and so there's this graphic from the World Food Program, uh, and so it talks about hunger. And so the dark areas, that's where the hunger is the most. And the United States, you can see, is green, so it's not, it's not the worst, but we still have hunger in our, in our, in our country. Okay, so uh, there was this report, uh, this study, that said that an additional 4 billion people in the world could be fed if land currently used to grow crops for livestock we're giving over to crops for human consumption. And so let's imagine that just four billion, uh, if we changed uh, the land being used to grow crops for animals, so if we change that to, grow, to be used for human consumption, so that's pretty amazing. Uh, and I saw a number that said that uh, theoretically the earth can produce food for up to nine billion people. Right now we're at seven billion. So I'm just, that's another number. 36% uh, of the calories produced by the world's crops are being used for animal feed, and only 12% of those calories ultimately contribute to the human diet. So again, there's all that energy that goes into the production of meat, and only so many of it goes, is consumed for human, and a lot of it, uh, a lot of it is being uh, wasted inefficiently. And food preparation, so now I wanna look at the impact of uh, meat consumption to human labor, or to labor rights and stuff like that. Uh, so I want you guys to imagine like when people are working in these things, there's, it's like a factory again, like the video mentioned, and it's like you have animals that come in alive and they're being, they're hung into like these, uh, these forks. Oh yeah, like forks, and then they go around in a line and there's an assembly line and you have people along the assembly line and each one makes a different cut and you're just there like for eight hours um, most of them are people well obviously well, most of them are have lower income uh, they're people of color a lot of them are undocumented and so the the people uh, who run the companies they take advantage of them uh, women are also make about 50 percent of the people who work in these things and they uh, there's also reports of sexual abuse uh, and, and there's labor, as far as organizing, uh, the companies, they, they've done away with that because obviously uh, if, they, if they organize and they're gonna ask for rights, they're gonna ask for more money for uh, better conditions, a lot of them get injured and after that they just let them go. They don't, they don't like compensate them for the injuries and stuff like that. So it's all about the profit and just getting as much money out and you really not caring for the, for the people who are working or preparing the food. Uh, so meat packing work has extremely high rates of injury. Workers injured on the job may then face dismissal, like I said. Uh, meat packing work has extraordinarily high rates of injury. Again, that's the same. Uh, immigrant workers who are undocumented uh, risk deportation if they seek to organize or to improve conditions in the workplace. That's from a Human Rights Watch report. And human rights usually uh, does reports on like countries that are being affected by war or or or, bar, or civil war, uh, but recently in 2005 or 2008 they had to come up with a report of the meat industry, and that's because of all these things that are happening there. It's so bad that the Human Rights Watch had to like focus on the meat industry, and so they don't do that much. Uh, and then three more points there: almost 25% of the poultry workers are undocumented. 
That's from the Hispanic Center. Almost half of the U.S. chicken factory laborers are Latino, and more than half are women. That's from UCFW. In 2008, 100 poultry workers died. 300 were injured. So that's from OSHA, which is the people who uh, look at working conditions in workplaces, and they're supposed to be helping like improve those conditions. And that's a picture of a, uh, where they prepare the meat. And so I just went over some effects that the main industry has on the environment and on people's health and on labor rights. Uh, so I hope you got that information and that you learned something new. And hopefully, uh, maybe you can just, it does, you don't have to become a vegan, you can just like decrease your meat consumption. And if you do, maybe when you take out the meat from your, from your day, uh, you can think about all the positive things, the positive impact you're having toward your planet and toward other humans. Thank you. I'm a vegetarian, and it was both for health reasons and also conscience-wise. Because I was raised in Mexico, and our tradition, yeah, my parents killed the goats and the chickens at home. They raised them. And I felt bad every time they did it. I even cried. I still remember crying about my dad decaying like the, the goat, and it was crying mad, mad, right? And so I felt bad for that poor creature because I understood pain. Like, how could I not feel pain for that animal and so forth? And, but as I became more aware about it, it was more through college and more awareness through professors that I realized that, you know what, I'm contributing to this system, the system that is my went over. It's the consumption, it's like more and more. And what, this, what you don't realize when you're consuming food, when, when, when it's, whether it's chicken or uh, beef, is that you're kind of promoting the system. You're creating this um, kind of like, oh, this is what gets valued. Okay, this industry is better, or this uh, company gets more value. And so you're promoting that system. And so that's one of the reasons why I became a vegetarian. And then it wasn't until this last year, one year ago, I became absolutely no fish at all, no uh, nothing at all. And then this year I became vegan. And and I want to say that you know. I, I want to say in our in the Hispanic culture has to do a lot with how we're raised. Uh, we're raised to believe, you know, meat is good, you know, carne asada, and, and it's barbecue, because it's a tradition. It's part of the culture of, you know, drinking and eating and consuming. Um, but it also, like, I've also noticed another thing here in the Valley. Like, yeah, we're like the highest, McAllen is the highest in uh, obesity, and yet it's not being addressed. Um, I know, um, University of Kingsville, the AgriLife Extension is promoting like the awareness in Hispanics here in the valley, like to consume more vegetables and so forth. But what doesn't get addressed is like it becomes so much easier for people to buy like food that's not healthy, like mass-produced food, um, McDonald's and so forth. It's easier to consume that as opposed to you know planning out a meal, because that's one of the things that I've noticed as a vegan that you have to literally plan out your meal. You have to cook ahead of time because, like everywhere and every, in, like almost every industry, like it's so hard to find anything vegan here in um, restaurants unless you know specific ones that will cater to you. Because it's all been industrialized. It's all been, uh, you know, massively produced. Whatever is more cheap, whatever is more feasible. So that's my story. <coughs> Y'all have questions for me? Are you still involved uh, in the industry or the, um, the, uh, your family? <laughs> my family, however, yeah, they still. Um, my parents um, consume less, I will say that much, as far as like red meat. I hardly see them buy any red meat anymore. Um, they still do buy like chicken and eggs. And so, I mean, but that's greatly like different to what it used to be, where it was like almost virtual. Uh, well, yeah, um, I turned vegetarian. I turned vegetarian in high school. Um, it was like sophomore year uh, when I changed to the Science Academy, which is in Mercedes. Before that, I had never met a vegetarian, and I, I never, never even thought that was like something. And so I met vegetarians, and again, I asked them too, like, why are you vegetarians, and what is it, like, what do you eat? And then so they, they uh, talked to me about a video, a movie, 
uh, which you can also find online. It's called Earthings, and after watching that, like, I just decided I wanted to become a vegetarian, uh, and uh, since then, and then I've learned obviously a lot more things about it. The first it was like for health and for the animals, and then, but now like labor rights, environment, all these things that go into it. I also learned about those uh, more toward the future. Uh, and I decided to become veganism uh, last November. Uh, I think I lost, well, after checking my weight, I lost like 10 pounds from vegetarian to vegan. So that was uh, something noticeable. Uh, in my family, they consume a lot more vegetables that like I've introduced, like we didn't eat a lot of vegetables and my parents didn't have, know a lot. Uh, well, I introduced a lot more vegetables into their diet and they do, they're a little bit more health conscious. Uh, so that's how my, how I've helped my family. Thank you. Okay. Why did you become What? Why did you become uh, I became a vegetarian because I woke up one day after eating like a week of barbacoa tacos and like my mom asked me, do you want like a barbacoa taco? I'm like, no, just give me a potato and egg. And like literally, like that's the only reason I don't, like I just, I haven't eaten meat in like five years since then. So it made you feel like sick at that same time? Uh, I don't, I don't know, like I didn't have like a big like uh, moment of realization, it was just like I was on the internet a lot, so like you read like, oh, this person's a vegetarian, this person's a vegetarian, and I'm like, well, maybe there's something to this vegetarianism, so yeah, I tried it, and now, five years later, here, yeah. And everyone has different reasons, and it could be just, um, like, celebrities, like, I also, that was part of the reason, I was like, oh, all these important people, like, uh, and activists, or like, vegetarians, or vegans, like, that could be enough motive, like, you see that, or another addition to to why you become a vegetarian or vegan. So you can get all the necessary nutrients and proteins from, from a vegan yeah. diet. That was my big concern, you know, the protein part. Yeah, and that's kind of like a myth or something that is also perpetuated by the system that you can't, that you can't have, uh, like, protein, because that's something. Yeah. It would be frail. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I remember I was listening to, or hearing one guy, and uh, he, he was, he was uh, I guess he was explaining the human being, how the human is made to eat, you know, fruits and vegetables and not meat. And uh, he was saying that if, in order for a human to eat an animal, you need tools. Yeah. Like, we don't have the necessary tools, we don't have the claws and all this stuff to take an animal down or whatever. So that's not, he was saying, that's, that's not the natural food of a human. The, the human natural food, or well, we can bend down and get stuff, we can reach out and get pick things from from trees and stuff like that. So that was one thing. And, and another thing we're saying is the digestive tract that the human has that animals that eat plant based diets have a longer digestive tract, where animals that eat primarily meat, like a lion, has a shorter dige digestive tract because you know obviously the meat produces certain toxins or whatever as it's being digested. Just wanted to throw that in. Yeah takes about two days for meat to be, you know, processed in your stomach. I mean, those two days, your stomach is, you know, whatever's in that meat. And I, like, he didn't go over a lot of the, the meat industry, but, like, if you watch the Earthlings or who ate that, um, that one, it's a really good video. But it kind of shows you, you really don't know what's going into this meat. Like, that burger patty could be 20 different kinds of, you know, animals, the cows, like, you know, diff 20 body and you really don't know what you're consuming and in that like you can create you know for yourself wreak havoc on your body like cancer and so forth because it's not supposed to be that we're you know two days and all this food is supposed to be there the meat so i'm, like, I'm good with vegetables <laughs> Go ahead and come up. although i have seen uh seen videos where some some tribes they're primarily meat eaters and they're healthy but at the same time, yeah. you know, what's going into their meat, you know? Yeah, it's naturally raised and so forth. And that's what I, like I said, if, you know, if it was, but, you know, they give you a lie, it's farm raised. It's not farm raised, it's industry raised. Yeah. Uh, when, like, you know, when my dad and my mom were living in Mexico, yeah, that was farm raised. They had the cattle out from, you know, the wild, the sheep, the whatever, whatever it is. It was out in the wild. And they would praise it for the hair. And you know, if they killed the animal, they used every single part of the body, the
the blood, the, the intestines. It was, you know, like I felt like it was, not that I, it was okay, but it was, at least they respected the whole body. When you come to the industries, there's parts that they use and parts that they don't use. Well, I think they use all, they use all of it too, yeah. which is in a more dogs. In yeah, a more, yeah. uh, <laughs> the dog food, yeah. <laughs> you know. Uh, one other thing, um, you did, you discussed like the land usage, but one one of the things that uh, I don't think you addressed was the fact that they're cutting down rainforest uh, oh, yeah, in order to, to in Argentina, the in, Amazon, yeah, to raise the cattle. In order to grow the corn to raise the cattle, or just to to raise the cattle itself, and that is rainforest we're never going to get back anytime soon, because they have chemicalized and destroyed the, the the ecosystem on that piece of land, and. Uh, you know, we're doing it for this short-term monetary gain, uh, gain instead of you know being long-term sustainable. Uh, another thing, another good video is one called the King Corn. Um, it's a it corn and everything. Yeah, it's, it's, it, it goes into how we since we've subsidized, subsidized corn, corn. Yeah. to yeah. such a great degree in this country particularly, uh, we we put it in everything. It's like a Lego brick of all the other food we consume. And uh, what another thing it goes into is the destructive uh, capability it has on farm animals. You know, farm animals weren't meant to eat corn as much as we feed them. And so they're getting sick and they need more antibiotics. And so that just worsens the cycle uh, by continuing to do this. Uh, so that's uh, another important thing. Yeah, like I could have also talked about like the antibiotic resistance because they used a lot of antibodies on the animals. Because they get, again, they get like all these injuries and stuff, and uh, they just get sick a lot, and so they're putting all these antibodies so they don't get infections and stuff. Because then you lose the animals and you lose profit, uh, and so you want most of them to go like to, for consumption. And so now there's all these uh, bacteria and stuff that are being like persistent to, to antivirals and stuff like that. And so that's another thing you can look at and consider. What do you Good. Oh, we can have a whole conversation on organic food, you know, I mean, all the growth hormones and antibiotics, yeah. pesticides, all that crap. I mean, even if you're a vegan, you can still get cancer, because mm -hmm. unless you're eating organic, which okay. is incredibly hard to do out here, because there's no whole foods. I found that... Well, even if you're, if you're, if it's labeled organic, I mean, what does that yeah. mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah you know, you paid for the label. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Trenton and 10th Street, they, they, they happen to have, like, the most organic food I've seen. But uh, other than that, I went to the H E B on Klausner. I mean, was it on Klausner? Yeah. Yeah, the one that yeah yeah. And man, they don't have anything. They have sugar, organic. They have organic sugar, but nothing <laughs> else is organic. It's crazy. But over there on Trenton and 10th Street, there's a lot more wealthy people, you know. So. Yeah, that's true. That's one of the things that I've noticed. It's like, well, you you live in the affluent neighborhood, and you have a like, Gucci B, you know, you might have more organic stuff than other. Um, Stores. Because oh. and, and it all ties back to all this economy stuff because it's like what's being promoted is the non organic, the more the the cheap stuff. The cheaper stuff. Yeah, that's the thing stuff. that that yeah, everybody tells me, even my dad, oh, what was it more expensive? I'm like, well, yeah, you know, because it's better for you, it takes longer to grow and all this stuff. And he's like, oh, I can't do that. I was like, well, you, had a, you have a Harley Davidson and you put all these expensive parts on it. Why can't you put that into your body? A motorcycle is replaceable, you know? But uh, yeah, it's, it's harder to push than you think. <laughs> people, for people that do have money to buy it, they'd rather spend it on fun stuff. <laughs> well, remember that most people in society, in this culture specifically, have been told that their identity is wrapped up in the things they buy, and the things they own, and, and, and all that, that stuff. Status. Yeah. yeah. So they, that they've been taught not to care about their own bodies, but that, that and, and, and fucking religion, man, that's what keeps everybody thinking, well, maybe this will cause cancer, but fuck it, I'll just go to heaven faster, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what's, the, uh, what's, what's the vegan perspective on lab-grown meat? Uh, do you have any thoughts on that? Um, I think it's, it might be okay, it might be viable, because it's like, uh, you don't, I would still have to learn about it, and they're still developing, it's a process, and it's a, process in development um, and so you can grow it and you don't have to I mean how do they grow it does it require more energy and stuff like that so I guess it would be comparing stuff like that mm -hmm. I think it would be good like it would you would grow it and it would taste I mean it's it's just like a normal meat it's just not being grown on that I mean I guess the, the thing would be what what are the molecules in there saying you know what are the atoms and is it something that the body's gonna recognize 
I mean, just because we think it's digestible, it's just what we've grown, right? We, oh, you can eat it, you know, yeah, you're fine. But the long-term effect is what mm -hmm. what escapes us because that's what we've been, yeah, we've, been we've always thought about it was, you know, the long-term, that's not, that's not what we're worried about, you know what I mean? Satisfy the hunger, you know. Make it does it make me immediately sick. If it doesn't, then it must be all right. <laughs> you know. Yeah, that's the short-term gain profits motive at work. They just oh, if it doesn't kill anyone in ten seconds, let's ship it. <laughs> uh, in your land comparison between you know growing meat and growing vegetables and such, uh, that didn't take into account the possibilities of like vertical farming or uh, hydroponic, yeah, hydroponic yeah. or anything like that. Because we can produce far more food in a smaller area given yeah. those technologies now, and uh, that's even going to make the comparison worse <laughs> for the for the meat industry. Yeah, that's, that's one thing I didn't consider when I, you know, thought about vegans and vegetarians. That just that they were trying to be healthier and more humane towards animals. But then I took into consideration the fact that plants can feel pain too. You know, so I was like, well, you know, I just kind of dismissed the whole vegetarian thing. I didn't take into account the effects like on the land and the CO2 emissions. I didn't even think about that. I was just thinking about the health side and the and the humane side. But uh, that's a, a fact that people, a lot of people don't know, like vegetables and all that, they can feel pain. There's ways that we can measure when you cut into it, the fact they can feel pain. So if you're just doing it for the humane reason, then it doesn't make sense. I mean, every, every all life, you know, feels something. It's all a living thing, even if it's not an animal. Uh, what do you think of uh, the trend for insectivore, or insectivorism, where people just eat and fry insects? Uh, I've heard of that. It's better than like animals and poultry because they're so readily available. I mean, I won't like you asked me about that one and about the lab-grown animals. I probably wouldn't eat them. I think I would do insects, like just try them like one day. But what are we cooking it with? <laughs> what oil are we? Go find some peanut yes. oil, of course. <laughs> But uh, I mean that's that's a big thing. I mean you can easily grow, you know, uh, uh, kilos of insects, you know, far easier than animals. Yeah. <laughs> and you can get even more protein out of them stuff. More protein, yeah. <laughs> yeah. One of the things uh, with climate change that I learned in biology biology class is the the only things that are like raising in population are birds and insects. So insects might be a thing that we might want to eat. You know, since they're growing in population, them and birds, you know. They're trying to balance out the earth again. Yeah. Probably. Yeah, like, I mean, that's yeah, that, that's how things. Is, yeah, when the food chain is imbalanced, it's like when you lose one, you have yeah, one so, more of something. You have less of something. And then that goes out, and then this other one keeps going. Like the that that whole thing about the, the what is it the wolf and the rabbits thing? We the stories tell us that there's not enough wolves, you get all these rabbits, and then yeah. you start getting more wolves, and then there's not enough rabbits, so the wolves die out, and it just. It has to be a balance somehow. Until it gets out. Yeah, we waste a lot of stuff, you know, if you look at our land dumps and all that stuff. So I'm guessing a lot of insects, you know, go out of there. Plus, like, like in my yard, there's, like, a lot of ants and all that other stuff. They're just eating all the stuff that we waste, I guess. <laughs> and then the birds eat the insects, I guess. So. And then we spray everything with pesticides to try to get rid of that problem. <laughs> we all die together. <laughs> well, thank you for your presentation. Thank you.